continuation of uh, Paul's case uh, by Will Cather. When the symphony began, Paul sank into one of the rear seats with a long sigh of relief and lost himself as he had done before the Rico. It was not that symphonies as such meant anything in particular to Paul, but the first sight of the instruments seemed to free some hilarious spirit within him, something that struggled there like the genius in the bottle found by the Arab fisherman. He felt a sudden zest of life. The lights danced before his eyes, and the concert hall blazed into unimaginable splendor. When the soprano soloist came on, Paul forgot even the nastiness of his teacher's being there, and gave himself up to the particular intoxication such personages always had for him. The soloist chanced to be a German woman, by no means in her first youth, and the mother of many children, but she wore a satin gown and a tiara, <clears throat> and she had that indefinable air of achievement, that world shine upon her, which always blinded Paul to any possible defects. After a concert was over, Paul was often irritable and wretched until he got to sleep. And tonight, he was even more than usually restless. He had the feeling of not being able to let down, of its being impossible to give up this delicious excitement, which was the only thing that could be called living at all. During the last number, he withdrew and, after hastily changing his clothes in the dressing room, slipped out to the side door where the singer's carriage stood. Here he began pacing rapidly up and down the walk, waiting to see her come out. Over yonder, the Shenley, in its vacant stretch, loomed big and square. Through the fine rain, the windows of its twelve stories, glowing like those of a lighted cardboard house under a Christmas tree. All the actors and the singers of any importance stayed there when they were in Pittsburgh. And a number of the big manufacturers of the place lived there in the winter. Paul had often hung about the hotel, watching the people go in and out, longing to enter and leave schoolmasters and dull care behind him forever. At last, the singer came out, accompanied by the conductor, who helped her into her carriage and closed the door with a cordial Auf Wiedersehen, which set Paul to wondering whether she were not an old sweetheart of his. Paul followed the carriage over to the hotel, rapidly so as not to be far from the entrance when the singer alighted and disappeared behind the swinging glass doors, which were opened by a negro in a tall hat and a long coat. In the moment that the door was ajar, it seemed to Paul that he too entered. He seemed to feel himself go after her, up the steps, into the warm, lighted building, into an exotic, tropical world of shiny, glistening surfaces and basking ease. He reflected upon the mysterious dishes that were brought into the dining room, the green bottles in buckets of ice as he had seen them in the super party pictures of the Sunday supplement. A quick gust of wind brought the rain down with sudden vehemence, and, and Paul was startled to find that he was still outside in the slush of the gravel driveway, 
that his boots were letting in the water and his scanty overcoat was a clinging wet about him, that the lights in front of the council hall were out, and that the rain was driving in sheets between him and the orange glow of the windows above him. There it was, what he wanted tangibly before him, but the fairy world of a Christmas pantomime as the rain beat in his face. Paul wondered whether he were destined always to shiver in the black night outside, looking up at it. He turned and walked reluctantly toward the car tracks. The end had to come sometime. His father, in his night clothes at the top of the stairs, explanations that did not explain hastily, improvised fictions that were forever tripping him up with upstairs room and its horrible yellow-white wallpaper, the creaking bureau with the greasy plush color box, and over his painted wooden bed the pictures of George Washington and John Calvin, and the famed motto, Feed My Lambs, which had been worked in bread worsted by his mother, whom Paul could not remember to be continued. Yeah.